I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Old School Bodybuilding Clothing Company. If leg day was yesterday, and now you're wondering why toilets are so damn low, you are definitely old school. If you're the only athlete at your gym that knows there's a contest today, and it's to see who trains the hardest, you are old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. I love it. Welcome back to another exciting edition of After Hours. I'm Dave Palumbo, of course, and we have a skeleton crew here today. Thank God, my uh, my good friend and new Whack Pack member. Big Lenny is joining us. So, Lenny, what's going on over there at the, on the, I should say, the east coast of Florida? I'm on the west coast here. Well, it's perfect weather, no humidity. Uh, I was out there earlier getting some vitamin D, which I suggest everybody does. Just waiting for the Olympia. All our misfit maniacs, are behind, and myself included, are behind Antoine Valiant, So, Now, why are you guys all behind Antoine? Because he always DMs me back, and he buys our, our merchandise. Oh, he does! I didn't know he that. Wears it. Yes, he wears it at home and during his workouts. And not only that, just his physique and his general attitude towards life, and all the uh, things he's been able to overcome. He's an inspiration to everybody. Yeah, no, he definitely is. Now, you you know, given the fact that you're in Florida and the Olympia is in Florida, will be will you be going to the Olympia or watching it at home? Quite possibly, I plan on making the trip, but there's about a 70% chance I'll be going. Oh, okay. So then you might, you might make an appearance at the Olympia, which would obviously boost the, uh, the celebrity nature of the Olympia quite a bit. Matter of fact, I'm surprised they didn't make you the, uh, the ambassador of the, of the Olympia this year. <laughs> hey, I mean, it definitely increased the popularity of the sport. You're way more popular than Shaquille O'Neal, as far as I'm concerned, you know, in the bodybuilding community at least. Yeah, he's a boring basketball player. Other than that, what is he? <laughs> just the greatest genetics on earth. And what does he do? He goes and plays basketball. That's right. That's right. He should have been a bodybuilder, a football player. Think about it. If he would have been like a bodybuilder, he probably would have had to weigh 600 pounds on stage, right? <laughs> <laughs> you he know, to fill out his frame, so to speak, you know? Sure. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal... Uh, uh, up next, uh, seven feet, uh, two inches tall, 600 pounds. He's got striated glutes. Unbelievable. <laughs> I think he, he could have been. He could have been Ronnie Coleman at that height. There you go. That's right. He probably had the genetics to do it. Now, I don't know if you heard, uh, Chuck Yeager, 97 years old, uh, the first man to ever break the speed of sound, the sound barrier. He was a, a, a true, uh, I guess you could say, uh, maverick, you know, pilot back in the day he was the guy that kind of inspired the, the whole space program in this country actually he just died 97 what a great life trailblazer right. that's what we need in bodybuilding we need to get one of the guys up there in their 90s that's been performance enhancing drugs and <laughs> has been able to reach that age and a life of excellence i think we'll be seeing it obviously 1956 is when People started using Dianabol. I'm sure there's guys before that that used testosterone, but I predict we're going to see a lot of centenarians that have used performance enhancing drugs in the next 20 years. I hope so. I hope they're all they're going to live. Jaeger uh, flew actually. You know, they didn't even announce when he broke the sound barracks. It was like a top secret mission. He threw seven flew 700 miles an hour, which was almost a little over the speed of sound. Remember, imagine this. They didn't know if you broke the speed of sound, if like the plane would explode or something like that. No one knew because no one had done it. So this guy had the balls to get in yeah. a plane and f fly up to 40, 45,000 feet in the air in 1947. Yeah. 
and fly 700 miles an hour and break the speed of sound. I mean, that that you got to have some pair of cojones to do that, right? Right. By the same token, as you pointed out, there's probably many men that have died trying that that we don't even know about. Well, yeah, the test pilots, the, the, those planes would fall apart because they weren't, you know, they didn't have a, you know, they didn't have the technology they have today to do that type of stuff. The guy also oh, flew cool. like 30. He threw flew 33 missions in World War II, or no, 64 missions. I think he downed like 33. Uh, uh, planes uh, for the Nazis uh, against the Nazis there, and he actually got sh the, the son of plane. what? I couldn't imagine flying a plane, which is hard enough, but being shot at at the same time and trying to hit targets yourself. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean he got thirty-three planes he down, and he actually got shot down himself, and the, the he actually survived. He evaded the German troops and and somehow made it back. The guy is like a. You know, this, this guy has got balls of steel, you know. Well, where's the PTSD at from him? No, there is not. I'm, I'm shocked he didn't, the guy didn't run for president. I mean, who wouldn't vote for this guy? I mean, this guy is, this is the guy you want, you know, leading your country, man. He's not afraid of anything. Hey, they would call him a racist and white privilege, so he'd never make it today, that's for sure. Yeah, he would. <laughs> oh, there's Mr. G. All right. <laughs> yeah, l listen. Those guys, those guys sucked it up. They had, they had no choice when they came. When they came back, they had a, they had families. They had to go right to, they, you know, they picked up by the bootstraps and went right to work, you know. But think about it, Chuck. We were talking about Chuck Yeager, you know, dying in '97. You know, first man to break the yeah. speed, the uh, sound those barrier. Guys, yeah, those guys were pot. Those guys were freaks. Yeah. To be, I mean, to be a pot, test pilot, you got to be in sick shape. Yeah. Well, you, you know what? The, the, the also, I read. I didn't even know this. He br he fell off his horse like a couple days before the, the 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 flight, and he didn't want to tell anyone. So he went to some like local doctor that he knew, and they taped his ribs. You know, just because he didn't want to cancel the flight, and he did it with two broken ribs, nonetheless. That's how crazy that, uh, this guy was. <laughs> and then he broke. He actually broke his his own record, and, and he flew two times the speed of sound later on. Which is even crazier for like fourteen hundred miles an hour or something like that. I mean, that's that's nuts, you know. In some kind of rocket jet rocket plane, you know, that you know. Did he fly? He flew. Did, he was the first. Did, was the first guy to fly into space with a plane? Well, I mean, he was. He did it at, at like a very high altitude, like forty five thousand feet, when he broke the speed of sound because obviously the air is thinner up there. Remember, the planes couldn't go that fast. They they had to put like special jet rocket propulsion. I think they dropped him out of a 747. I don't even think he he flew up there himself or something like that. Yeah, these guys worked out like savages. Oh, they I trained. Know. I mean, I, I I worked out with a guy who was a, who was one a, a pilot. You know, and they can, you can't be that big neither. You, you got to be like under 200 pounds. You yeah. can't be because you're too big and uh, the weight. Yeah. He he weight trained. He was like a triathlete, triathlete and weight trained. I mean, ridiculous shape. And you gotta be able to handle those G forces. Oh, I know. Can you can you imagine when you when you know like look, no one's ever gone the speed of sound, right? And you're saying to yourself, or broke the sound barrier. No one knows what's gonna happen, you know, to the airplane or he's he's get they guessing everything's gonna be all right. You know what I mean? And that had to be scary as shit to do that. You know, he could have like you know blown up or something like that while he was doing it. Well, so. they blow up all the time. Yeah, you kidding me? They're yeah, yeah, yeah. How many uh, planes they go through before they figure out know. You know, which which jet engine works? There's a know? great movie if anyone wants to watch. It's called The Right Stuff. It was actually inspired by uh, by Chuck Yeager, believe it or not, the guy who wrote the book, The Right Stuff. Looked at all his accolades, and they put him in the. And Chuck Yeager was in the movie, not the real Chuck Yeager, but I mean, they had a guy playing him, and they did it. It's a whole account of how the space program in this country worked. They didn't know anything about what it was like to go in space, so they subjected these astronauts to like ridiculously crazy like conditions, like flipping them upside down and all kinds of nutty stuff, and making them like go into the water and 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 you know just to see if their bodies could handle the the stress because they didn't want to send anyone into space that was had some kind of weakness or something like that, you know, physically. Well, you gotta, you gotta get, get used to being disorientated. Yeah. You know, completely yeah. disorientated and yeah. and still be able to to to. to Handle the controls, right? You right. know. Anyway, that's that's, uh, that's like an when, that guy's like an American in the same hero. Room. Dave, it's like when we're all in the same room and you're trying to hold order. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Anyway, I get Mr. G sent me this uh, new tin of uh, cookies. I'm gonna open them up. I already opened, I did them on my Instagram, but I got to show them on the show. I think you got to send Big Lenny a little. Instagram, a little the, water. the thing went for like ten seconds, Dave. It was yeah, like yeah. this. Look at look at the tin. 
I, I actually had a hot. I had to hide all the stuff because people, my kids were eating them too fast. I said I got to save some stuff for the show. I think you got to send Big Lenny a little tin of stuff too. Here's yeah, your space bar. The space bars are cool. No, they got the the. Um, they have all kinds of coconut stuff in them. These are really good. But this is my favorite, believe it or not. These are the peanut butter and jelly uh, cups. Oh yeah. Oh that's, my god. That's pe Those have more protein than actually we're gonna. Put, that's actually on the on the label. They have. They may have like 20 grams in each one. There's no label, Mr. G. So. <laughs> <laughs> they they definitely have more than it's on the label. All right. So let me show people these things. These things are like they're like little peanut butter cups. I don't even. What did you make? How did you make this steak? Keep Those this, are yeah. all right. Those are that's peanut butter. That's gourm, That's homemade peanut mm. butter. But it's not. It's I'll call it peanut butter chocolate. But it's just all peanut butter. What's this? Know? White chocolate? No, it's just peanut butter. That's peanut butter. Really? Chocolate. Wow. Mm. Yeah. So and and then it's raspberry jam. And so we were able to how able to drive protein because we make the peanut butter. We we grind the peanuts for the right. peanut butter. We grind that. We make a protein peanut. We put the species in there, obviously. So you, the, hold on. The, so you use the isolated the peanut, peanut, uh, protein with the right. peanut, and that's how we. And wow. and, and then, then once I do that, then I, I actually can add more protein to the actual chocolate mix uh, itself. You know, so so it's like I was there's able no to get chocolate double though in here, Mr. G. What? You said add it to the chocolate mix. There's no chocolate. No, there's no. I'm I'm calling it chocolate because everyone see when everyone. But it, but it's it's peanut butter, peanut butter. You know, as as a chocolate. How do you keep not, this peanut butter in this shape? Molds, very simple. It stays they're, together we have, really well, molds. though. Those and those molds are bigger than the Reese. You can't use Reese's peanut butter cups. Right. Hershey's bars all have a a, a, a pattern on on the size. So you can you can use a oh. different. They have, so the molds they make a different. But I got you can't you. do that same size. Right, right. I, I understand what you're saying. These are it's really simple, good. It's not that. Look, once you once you build the cooking studio down there and the, and, and the thing, we could do the cooking shows. I can show people how to make. You know. We don't want to give away the recipe or how do you make. No, these I, I will. That I won't give All away. Right. All right. <laughs> what we got to try to figure out is the uh, maybe do a sugar free jelly in there or something like that. You know? I could do any. I could do any jelly I right. want. Now, what are these? Now, my, my son loves these things. These are like those old, like the, the like the chocolate oh, you get in the cord, chocolate those box. Those are cherry cordials. With the yeah, with cherry little cherry cordial in there. Yeah, those yeah those, those most most women most women like like stuff with you know cherry cordials. And, my son devoured these things. I had a high. I had that. He, he, he like I had a high snake. these from him. He, he ate a whole like a snake. Yeah, he was like pop, pop, popping them in his mouth one at a time. Now, what's on the outside of these? Is this is this protein? Yes, it's all the cho all our chocolate is chocolate protein. Okay, all of it. How many grams you know, of protein thing, is in this one? The only thing is, it's inside the inside would not because it would completely unless I put a cream in there. I maybe you should do a cream. Butter. Yeah, maybe you should do a cream. I'm not. Yeah, we could do. I mean, you name it, we could do it. I mean, there's only so much. Right. I mean. All right. So all, just, all this stuff is available now at your at your at MrPotsProtein.net. Yes, it is. The peanut butter and jelly ones are available. Yes, they are. Yeah, right. Look for the holidays. I have a whole. Can you, can you see that? Look at this. Whoa! Wow! All There's right. a whole tray. Lenny, get get us your address again. We'll get you a little uh, gift bag out to you. Mr. G Thank will you. send you a little holiday, uh, a little tr tin, a jumbo Palumbo yeah. tin of good stuff. Well, that's why I gotta send Lee. I gotta send Lee a whole bunch. Lee, uh, our, our boy Lee Priest. Yeah, no, yeah, he wants to. He told me. Yeah, I got, I got, I got his puppet too. See, see, uh, Lee, Lee, Lee is more than a bodybuilder. He drives cars too. Race car driver. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, that that's delicious. Remember, also, just as long as we're plugging stuff, the Anabolics 11th Edition book is available at DavePalumbo.com. Bill Llewellyn's huge, huge reference book on every anabolic compound you could ever imagine. It's amazing. This thing is huge. And it's got some great information in it. We're doing a stale just for the uh, for the whole Christmas holiday season. It's uh, over twenty dollars off. It's uh, fifty four ninety nine. So this is a, a crazy price on this book at DavePalumbo.com. While supplies last, of course. Uh, I know a lot of people. We've been selling a ton of these. These are great stocking stuffers and Christmas gifts for 
all the bodybuilders and people who work out out there who like to know about this stuff. This is great toilet reading, as I say. All right, that's my plug. Now, let's. We have the Olympia coming up, and um, you know, it's exciting this year because you know what? We never had an Olympia. I don't think ever in December, around Christmas time. How crazy! They should have it then. It sounds. They should have it then anyway. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I like the, the idea that it's the last show of the year, you know what I mean? Because, or at least one of the last shows of the year, I think it is the last show of the year, because let's face it, the Olympia should be, you know, it's like the Super Bowl. After that, the season should be over, right? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So are you going to go? So now that's in Florida, Dave, you can go. No, yeah, I bet I'm not going. I'm, I'm, I'm quarantining myself still. What do you mean quarantine yourself? I'm not you quarantining mean? myself from the other people. I, I don't want to be exposed to anyone else because, you know what, I would feel really bad if I brought it home to my house. So I'm, I'm being unselfish. Uh, I'm going to wait till this vaccine comes out. And then when people, you know, start getting vaccinated, then I'll, I'll go back to shows. I just don't want to risk it. You know what I mean? I, I, I couldn't, I'm in good conscience, you know, if something, God forbid, yeah, I brought it into look, my house. It's already been passed around to everybody anyway. I well, mean, yeah, but no one in my house has it. So I don't want to be, the, I don't want to be the typhoid Mary to bring it home. So... Well, first of all, what, what, why are you te- you you testing? Because those tests that they give you are taking your DNA. No, I I, I, I was no, only tested once. Plenty, before. right? I got yes. tested before I had my colonoscopy. I didn't have it, but I'm I'm not. I don't want to go and even risk it at this point because it's it's you know it's 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 widespread now. Obviously, my problem is if I went to the Olympia, I I could seclude myself. But you know what's going to happen, George? Everyone comes up to me. And then I and I haven't seen people, and then you you know you just start you know talking to people, and before you know it, you know you're 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 hugging people and right shaking hands and taking yeah, pictures. You gotta, and, Dave, what you're taking first of all, it's it's got a high uh, morbidity rate, which means which means you like the common cold you get it, but the mortality rate is 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 point oh one percent. I know, but I'm not worried about I me. Mean, what if what if I what if I'm fine and I bring it home and my mother-in-law gets it and she dies from it? Then then I your have mother-in-law to. she's. She's already been. First of all, she's already been exposed. <laughs> with, number so. one, number two, she's she's rock solid strong. <laughs> Ain't nothing happened to her. Are yeah. You kidding me? I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to live. I don't want to live it on my conscience. That's all. What? I don't want to have it on my conscience. You got to look. You got tuberculosis. You got all the other things that are out there. Pneumonia, I'm, right? Flu, yeah. right? I mean, come on. What are you, I, I, let what, me ask what, you a question. Are you going to the Olympia? Me? Yeah. Not this year. Next year, right, I will. Because right. it, it, cause, cause it, I thought they were going to lock the thing down and, you know, it's like yeah. it would have been a waste. I think they should keep I'm it. I actually in, think I, they should. I'm going to be able to. to, to I was look, saying, I'm I actually going think into, they should keep in, it in, in Vegas. Small, I, mean, a, I don't wear a mask. You know how I wear my mask? If I have to go in, like a chin strap. Yeah. Well, you, I, I wear it like this. Do you wear, <laughs> Lenny, you wear a mask when you go out? If I have to get food, other than that, no, yeah. I never would. Never would. No. Well, you guys, <laughs> we should up, wear. Guys. Hey, Greg, we should hey, wear one of the wrestling things. You know that the, the Mexican guys wear. I actually what thought Greg was. I didn't think you were going to show up, Greg. What? Where were you? Were you missing in action? Yeah, no, I was out. You know what it is? I didn't see that you texted me because uh, you know, look. You know, I, I, I mean, actually I, texted I, you. I actually tested you last night just to make sure I, that you would see it too. Oh shit! I didn't check it last night. If I would have saw it, I would have been here. No problem. Man, you really are. You really disconnect yourself, right? I, I envy you in a sense. You're disconnected <laughs> from the, the yeah, social I media. I wouldn't do any social media at all if I didn't have to. I don't like. But you don't do it. So you you are disconnected. You don't do it. Your your girlfriend does it. Right. Yeah. So you don't like you're don't not mean, on like your phone. Well, you can't go on your phone and check. Are you on the computer checking stuff? Like you know what's going on online? No, you know what? Uh, I do. You know, I got a desktop. You know, what I mean, I go yeah. on a desktop, not a laptop. This is a laptop I'm on right now. No, here. I know, but do you actually check like stuff like YouTube and stuff like that, or, or you just just go and check your emails? No, I just like really check my emails. Or, All right, that, or, you know, that, 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 I'm I, I'm interested in this because you know what. You're one of the very few people who are not addicted to the phone and social media. Now, let me ask you this question. Since you're not yeah. spending all this time on social media, what do you do all day with yourself? <laughs> I do a lot of shit. Like, believe it or not, I read. I do, I do a lot of stuff, you know, other stuff that that's, I have. No, to that's do. good. That's, but, I, I but you know, like, I look at that as, like, a t- like time wasting. Like, like, I, like, my girlfriend will look at that TikTok stuff, and I'm like, how the fuck? 
can somebody just sit in the house and do stupid things, make like stupid noises, like me, 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 me. <laughs> and somebody will put that on a fucking, somebody will put that on a TikTok or like when chicks sit in their bedroom, right? And yeah. and they do that, uh, uh, what, a tw- that twerking, right? Yeah. Who the fuck could sit and watch? It's like, look, 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 this girl's in her bedroom and she's just shaking her ass. I, I, mean, like, I have a better one, Greg. What do you think about these like moms, like these like like middle-aged women? They're like uh, they're like 45, 50, and they're doing like they're like trying to do all this kind of like, you know, the it mimics the like, you know, the, the pop singers and stuff like that, and they do all these sick dances, but they're like way like older than they should be doing that. I mean, how mortified would you be if your mother was doing that? I would be like, I would be ready to commit suicide if I was a kid. It's bad. It's bad. It, it, it's people are so bored. There's guys that like, there's a guy that's always wearing a Batman suit and shit like that and with his family, you know what right. I mean? Like, yeah, but I'm, like, I'm talking about the moms. Like if my yeah, mom ever are, did that, I, I, would, I wouldn't even want to go to school. That shit's all over TikTok. My I girlfriend know. will show me like, you know that stuff. You know, like these with women. The they're not even in good shape. Some of these women. They think they're hot. They think they're like super hot doing this. Right. The big get bored with their life. Now. Hey, Greg. The what? These, these, these girls have butts. So, I mean, I've seen girls with butt, with butt, butts that looks like the size of four girls when I was growing up. <laughs> and like, yeah, but any girl, the any girl, like shaking on his own like Jello. I mean, but uh, any girl is that? That's gross, bro. I don't like. You know what I'm talking ass. about? I seen girl yeah. like skinny like my finger. And it's like this big, and she's shaking it like, how is that? <laughs> how is that appealing? Uh, yeah, but you know what's funny? Yeah, but what's to me though? It's fucking time wasting. All these young kids today have well, no it's fucking not life. really, Greg. It's not really time wasting because people are making money. They're monetizing this stuff. So yeah, you but you know what even, are you going to be doing? Shaking say they're wasting their, their time. Bedroom. But how long are you going to do that for? Like, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? What do you like, think, Big Lenny? Lenny. How you doing? Hey, how you doing, Greg? Good to see you. Good seeing you too, man. Thank you. I, you don't like all that shit. You, you, you say you guy could no, see much that stuff. Everybody copying off everybody else, but see some originality. E- even the bodybuilders. Yeah, right. Up to their stupidity. I'd rather be learning something, expanding my mind, not pure stupidity every day, all day. Yeah, like Dr. Jordan Peterson. You know, guys like that. You know. Well, yeah, yeah but Lenny, exactly, when you, yeah. do you get do you get sucked into? I get sucked into watching these things sometimes, and I'm like appalled. But I'm actually wasting time actually watching. What What's the appeal of watching these 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 people that not? I can understand good looking people, people who can really dance, people who sing. You know, they they have good voices. But there's some people that have no talent. They're not good looking. They're, they're, it's like. It's like people are watching just because they want to see how ridiculous people can be almost. Bro, they, yeah. There's a girl that lost, that I saw in there, she's got like, she's got like a half million followers. She lost, she lost like 400 pounds and she's still 250. And I, I, I swear <laughs> to God, her, her, her butt is still like she was 600. Right, but, that, but, she, <laughs> but at least she, 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 at least she right. lost weight. She's That's like, like an inspiring look, look, story. Mama still got. She goes, Mama still got it. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> nah. Mama still got it, baby. Yo, she, dude, it's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> I, she, I'm disgusted like, by shit like that. I mean, I it's like, like <laughs> if I took Jello and went like this, that's what it's doing. You know. You know, when I think to back to like. Thomas Jefferson and, 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 you know, all those guys that, you know, were writing like, you know, books and, and treatises on like human, the human condition and, and, and human rights and trying to get like democracy. If they were to look ahead, you know, 150 <laughs> years and look at the crap that we're looking at on like TikTok, do you, do you think that they would be like, let's not even waste our time doing this anymore because th- this society is going to completely yeah. crumble at some point, you know? Dave, yeah, hey, you know what kills me? You know what fucking kills me? This, you ever see, every once in a while, is like, you'll see a news thing about somebody, like some kid, that like fucking the parents take the phone away and they kill the fucking parents because they can't get on that shit anymore. <laughs> or video, they take their video game away or yeah, some shit yeah. like that and the fucking kid goes nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you gotta, dude. The video game shit, bro. I could, ne- I can't play video game. I could never, ever, ever waste my fucking life just sitting there all day. Do, 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 you do, you do, know do, what do. the funny <laughs> thing is though about the video games, Greg? I, I believe, and I think even right now it probably is the case. 
all the like weapon systems on all these like you know aircrafts and and space shuttles and they're all like run like video games so like it's funny but it's a skill set that maybe actually is useful in, in, in our current climate of actually everything being completely r roboticized, so to speak. You but know, they, they the actually word. have a fucking rehab for people. Do they? That have like, uh, you know, for, that play too many games. Just people play for 12 hours. Well, you know what happens, it's, Greg? Well, if you're money. in a bad situation, let's say your house, you have a lot of fighting and that's maybe your parents are alcoholics or, or whatever the case. So maybe you're, you're, you're not really a popular kid in school. You can go home and get on the computer and it's like you're in another world disappearing from all your problems and you're the master of your universe in that in that world of of computer of video games. And I think kids get lost in there because it's a safe haven for them in their mind. You know what I mean? And so I understand the whole fantasy aspect of it, but it you're right. It, it can certainly it you can certainly get carried away in there for for way too long, you know. It breeds cowards, Dave. How many times do you get blasted all of us guys? You know, you get people that you don't even know who they are, but they know everything about you. Because when, you know, I'm on there or Lenny or, you know, you know you're know, you Lenny. Everybody knows who you are. Or, uh, you know, if I'm on there, they know who they're talking to. But I don't know who I'm talking to, like Venom123. And they'll be sitting there like fucking tough guys talking bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, well, that's why they want to they want to have people with have their license. That's why they wanted to, to have people go online and have their ID. Like you drive a car. To, so that way it would eliminate people from saying from saying felonious things. If you say something about somebody that's untrue, now you know who it is. So you'd be more or less likely to say shit about people. You oh, know? yeah, look at the bullying that's going on, man. Well, it's the government knows who everyone is, that's for sure. Don't worry about that. They know. What's that? The government knows. Like, you could go on anonymously on your computer and, 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 and say stuff about people. And maybe those people you're saying stuff about don't know who you are. But the government knows who you are. Oh, yeah, that's what my son does. Believe me. Believe well, they me. They, they know everything. Internet. They can find everyone. There's no hiding from these guys, you know. Yeah, the, government, the government's the one who, stole, who, who created the Internet so, so they could communicate without anybody finding out. Yeah. Or if it wasn't for the, 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 the military did that. George, when we were kids, you get your ass kicked in school or something like that, you know, by a bully or, you're, you know, whatever. But now today, the bullying, the cyber bullying, makes kids kill themselves. Because I they, know. They well, you got That's why we got to. That's, that's why we got to motivate these kids, to motivate these kids about being about being. Forget, fuck the bully. Make your own self stronger. We got to get these kids to exercise, do martial arts, and teach them how to be powerful inside themselves. Because those bullies, the bullies. Like a lot of kids don't want to do that, though, George. Today, they want to sit at home and play a video game instead or go and do some stupid TikTok video, you know, jump around or yeah, you know, you're, maybe in a pile of leaves or something. But you're yard. the parent. You're the father. You're the, you're the, you're, you're the leader. You no, are the dude, leader. Look you on, know, you know, look how you parents. raise your kids. You know, you got to keep... Look I mean, the parents a, today. They're fucked up. They're the ones that are raising these little trans kids at fucking five years old who don't even know what a penis is and shit like that. You know what I mean? They don't you, fucking know. That's you're sick, talking bro. about crazy. Parents are nuts. Greg, Parents you're talking about some, you're talking about a small percentage of some wacky, crazy people and the schools and the schools trying to teach these kids, you know, the wrong stuff like that. That stuff is wrong. Yeah, I'll agree with you. There's no doubt. But I'm saying to parents today, what what fucking kid? Look, I you know what fucking kid would be able to do that shit when we were younger? Your fucking mother would have said, "Wait, what are you? Get the fuck out of here! Get your ass, you know, get out of that dress or whatever the fuck." What the fuck? Yeah. The parents today are nuts. They're the ones. Let me tell you something. You know what? Let me tell you something about that shit. You know what? You know what? Fucking trans kids, right? That shit. They're like vegan cats. It's not natural. <laughs> Somebody made them that way. Somebody fucking put yeah, that shit. Yeah, sure you, you understand? A vegan cat is like a fucking right. trans kid. Nobody fucking, you know, like that little kid jazz and shit like that. That kid did fucking show him at 11 months old. The father's walking, holding, you know, you know carrying your arms up like this because the little kids can't walk. You know, so the father's holding and helping him walk like this. At 11 months old, and he's already dressed like a girl. You don't know fucking. I mean, it's crazy. Listen, I'm all for fucking, it's, I'm all for, you know, trans people. I'm not knocking trans people. This is a different story. But when you make some fucking kid go to school at five years old in a dress, he don't know. 
Well, I, my, I didn't know that my sister didn't have a dick when I was fucking <laughs> five years old. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. If you would have said to me, what's the difference between a boy and a girl when I was five? I would have said, uh, girls have long hair and boys have short hair. I, what the fuck did yeah. I know? Yeah. I didn't know, you know. You know, all about the picture they got down there. And I didn't know nothing about that shit. <laughs> you don't find that shit out till later. But what I'm saying is these parents that are doing that shit are also fucking giving the kids cell phones when they're fucking six or seven and right. shit like that. You know, they can, I have a friend whose kid at fucking six years old could fucking show me how to work the phone. No, no pretty, pretty much anyone can show you how to work the phone. Yeah, so better than you can. Now, look, can you imagine <laughs> if they would have dressed Lenny as a girl as a kid? Oh, Ladies, did your parents ever no. send you to school with pigtails and like a dress? My father oh, was to the right of Dick Butkus. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go to bed at eight o'clock every night. If he caught me dancing or singing, I'd get slapped in the face. <laughs> I didn't chew my food at the dinner table for a relief. I was sitting close enough where I can get a slap to the face. <laughs> so, and music in the weight room, we had a he had weights in the basement. Yeah. There wasn't any even any music. Wow. And when he went into a commercial gym with me, they were playing, you know, 80s rock. He right. thought that was a disgrace. <laughs> my, father hey, didn't, hey. my father didn't smack me, but he was like that with Lenny, like, just like with Lenny. He'd hear that fucking music. He'd be like, that's not music. And if I had to go to bed at like 7.30, 8 o'clock when I was young, I remember fucking, it'd still be light out and kids would be outside playing. I'm in fucking bed after McHale's Navy and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Yeah. McHale's Navy. That's yeah, how I know oh, yeah. fucking, Remember that? That was you know, great. Yeah. We, we, uh, Con, that guy Conway, he was in it. Yeah. And, and uh, what's the guy who played McHale? Was McHale. Ernest Borgnine. Uh, That's Ernest even before Borgnine. my time. The, these guys are uh, predating yeah, me Yeah, the kids don't know what to talk. But what I'm saying I'm was... I'm thinking about you on, uh, on YouTube. You when know what? I tell... Ended. My kids, I tell my kids, because there's also... I know kids that are in bed by 7.38. And I'm like, my son's up at 11 o'clock still. I'm like, you know that this, the kids are sleeping when you're swimming in the pool? <laughs> yeah, that's because you allow that. So I know, you're right. But you know what? My yeah. mom is... We my, get out of work you know, very late. Father, Hey, Lenny, you know what my father used to say? If you um, complain, you you know, if bedtime was 8 o'clock and you complain, tomorrow you're going to bed at 7. And if you complain <laughs> again, you're going to go to bed at 6. Well, my father and my mother, they were a team. They yeah. never went against each other. Right. If, if, I, if, if I said, if I complain, then it was the next day, it was earlier, and there was no fucking bending. He would never say, all right, all right, I'll give it to you. Nope. You go to bed. You knew yeah. never to right. fucking. I mean, he was a great father, and he was a very loving father. But yeah. with his word was his word, and they believe fucking kids should be in bed early. They're right. Right. And, and church every Sunday, confessions. You know, being a Catholic. Yeah. Once a month, stations oh, yeah. of the cross during Lent. Being an altar boy, I was there. <laughs> Same here. Same here. Man. <laughs> Same to respect. Day. And look how yeah, these guys turned out. <laughs> <laughs> but Lenny, that's Lenny. That's why we're, we're successes for the way we are right now. <laughs> yeah, true. No, at it's, least we can't call us kiss asses. That's the main thing. Right. I mean, all us. right. Hey, so Lenny, is your and is your dad still still alive? Does he still work out in Virginia? But he hasn't spoken to me because I didn't get the Division One football scholarship. He did. So <laughs> he's still holding the grudge. Yeah. Wait, wait. What yeah. do you mean? What do you mean? So he hasn't spoken to you in how long? Uh, he spoke to me once since 1987. 88. Wow. Holy shit. Have you ever tried How old are you? How old are you, Lenny? 17 at the time. It was a long story, but to make it short, I came home from football practice one day and all my old Spider-Man comics were ripped up on my bed and I screaming at him, why'd you do that? He says, I didn't think you were paying enough attention to your schoolwork and your football and your training. So I removed the distraction. Wow. So he I was, was so pissed off. What I did was, this is my senior year, I went to the, this is my junior, I went to talk to an Air Force recruiter, and but back then you could do basic training before you graduated, and if you're under 18, you can get that out of the way, and once you graduated high school, you could go right to active duty. Well, I did that unbeknownst to him, and I missed my senior year of football. You know, I just wanted to get away, and you know, he just basically disowned me after that, and he was right. Because, uh, yeah, you know, everything he told me, you know, how to intimidate people in football, how to train, how to 
sprint, how to have the, the right mindsets. I guess I didn't take it seriously enough, and I was worried about having friends and girlfriends and the other kids. And he did tell me, he says, once you get that Division One scholarship, you have more friends and girlfriends you could ever want. So looking back, it, it really hurt me. That's why I would tell kids, you know, listen to your father. You only get one shot. And Mr. G, I, I think you got to do an intervention and get the two of them back together. <laughs> I, you, 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 look, you just, you just got to call him up. You know, I mean, they get back with your dad. Just get the phone up, pick it up, say, Dad, I love you. You know, whatever happened back then, forget it, you know? Yeah, my father. Seen you know? some of my online activity. I don't think you'd be too impressed. <laughs> well, but, Lenny, you hey, stop. You, you're not doing that anymore. You 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 did the yeah. whole Hollywaska stuff or whatever that stuff is, <laughs> right? Hollywaska. Yeah. game. <laughs> hey, Lenny, I, my father. I used to have pictures of Schwarzenegger and Columbo uh, and all those guys on the wall yeah. in my room. And my father used to freak out and say to me, most boys your age have pictures of girls in bikinis on their wall. Oh. My son's got oil. He goes, my son's got oiled up muscle men in their underwear. Like, Those are <laughs> underwear. Those are posing charts. You know? oh. <laughs> he would freak out That's over that shit. You know, he said, yeah, I don't understand yeah. that. Why would you put a man in his underwear with oil on his body on your wall? It's weird yeah, how at some what... point, you know, we all we all realize that our our fathers, since we're talking about fathers now, even our mothers are all just regular people trying to do the best that they can at some point. And you know, it's it's funny because we hold them up as like gods, you know, right? Our parents because they were the people that raised us and told us what to do and provided for us. But at the end of the day, they're just, they were just regular people, you know, and uh, I think it, it, at some point you realize that and, and, and it makes more sense maybe, but uh, while you're going through it, obviously, you know, it, it's, it's very uh, emotionally, it could be emotionally traumatic, obviously, if you don't have a good relationship. The best advice I can give to any father out there is pick your kid up. No matter what your kid does, and you know what I'm saying, you know, Greg, pick your kid up. If he, if he gets screwed up on drugs, if he fails, if he if he fails, he does something wrong. Pick your kid up, no matter what it is. Pick that kid up because eventually the kid's gonna turn out straight, you know. And that's what your dad yeah. was trying to do, Lenny. In his mind, yeah. he thought he was picking you up, and he did. Look, you turned out to be a great person. You got a huge heart. You help a lot of people. You come on the shows and stuff. You make fun of yourself because you're doing that to, to because you you want to make people laugh. And forget about their problems. You're not doing it because I'm going to get money and this and that. You do it because you have a heart, you know. Yeah. And that's that's basically what a father is. You, Greg, you know, no matter what you did, your father was there. Yeah. Plus, right? I was that way with my kids, man. I I had my kid didn't even talk to me because of the divorce I had with my wife. I mean, I was spit at all kinds of shit. And in oh, the man. end, I I'm the one who picked him up. You know, like you know, I'm I I did everything for my. I not only paid child support. But I paid for everything. I paid child support and took the kid and fucking did everything, paid for everything else. You know what I mean? I paid for everything, financed everything. Right. You know what I mean? But it's, you it's know, your kid. It's your responsibility. I mean, it's your kid no matter what, you know? I mean, yeah, I've, that's the way my father, I've, you know, maybe Lenny's father, you know, see, sometimes if I don't know, you know, his whole situation. Lenny, how old are you right now? Well, I like to say I'm 18 forever, but I just turned 50 in April. Congratulations. Oh, God bless. Join, welcome Don't to the club. Bad, bro. I'm, I'm 60. I'm, I'm freaking 60. And, You're and 60? I'm, I'm 63. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Yeah, baby. You and Dave are like the kids. You guys are young kids. Yeah. <laughs> no, <but> yeah. <laughs> sometimes, though, the fathers, they – go a little overboard. I mean, you know, I don't think that Lenny's father needed to rip up his, you know, his stuff. My no, father no. would have said to me, you know what? You're spending too much time with the muscle magazines. Like I used to lift weights in my room and shit. Yeah. And he would take the weights away, but he wouldn't throw them away. He would say, when you get your shit together and you do what I tell you to do, or, you know, do, you know, start going to class in school. Cause I never used to go to class. You know, he'd say, then you get your weights back, you know, shit like that. But he wouldn't rip up the, I wouldn't rip them up and say, you know, well, I think I Lenny's think father saw a lot of dad. potential in him, you know, and, and, he, and he maybe vicariously was like living through him a little bit too and he wanted to see him be the best that he could be. But at the, at the end of the day, I think at the end of the day, the hardest thing for a father to do is accept that their kid is going to do what they're going to do and then just back that. You know, when I decided I was going to leave medical school, my father could have gone nuts and screamed at me and said, what are you, fucking nuts? 
You know, he didn't. He supported the decision, but he told me later, like 10 years later, after with the fact, he's like, I really <coughs> wanted to say something, but I didn't because I knew that I want you had to make your own decisions and be your own man. And I'm glad I didn't because you obviously became successful in your in whatever, you know, whatever niche you found for yourself. But, you know, it's tough not to say something, you know. So I almost, you know, I almost respect my dad that he was able to, like, let me make my own decisions because I don't know if I would be that, you know, I, if I would have that ability with my son, in other words. I mean, you know, success is failing. He, whatever he didn't accomplish in his life, that was him ripping up those magazines, you know? Wait, is Lenny an only child? Lenny, are you an only uh, child? I have a younger brother and I have an older sister who's mentally handicapped, so she lives in a group home in Miami. But does he stay in touch with any of them? No, not at all. No. See, so there's a flaw there. That's that's really, you yeah. know. It's I believe it's the parent. I believe water goes downstream. It, it, you don't. I don't believe it's the kids. Uh, I don't believe the kid should have to go to the parent. That's that's Lenny's his son. I believe that the father yeah. has to go to Lenny. That's the way I look at it. I'm sorry. Well, you it, know what? Sometimes one person has to be the bigger person and just suck it up because otherwise there will never be a reunion. You know. Yeah, but you can only kick a dog so many times until he says, you know what? Either, you know, you're done. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm on Lenny's side. I feel like, uh, you know, I understand. I say Mr. G makes it happen. Mr. G, you, you got to you gotta reach out to Lenny's dad. Let's get the contact Oh, Jesus info. Christ. His dad, <laughs> his Mr. Dad, G's got to have an intervention with Lenny's dad. We'll send him down there on wait, a mission. Wait, he's got to get On a Christmas mission. First. I, don't, I don't know if Lenny wants that, though. You guys, you I think he does. I mean, it's up to Lenny. I mean, all right, guys, I gotta uh, I gotta wrap this up. It's a short show today because I got uh, all the Olympia interviews coming up. I want to thank all of you guys for stopping by. Um, you know, this was a it was a good show. I think it was a lot of good information. You know, and a lot of uh, ins inspirational information here. Thank you for you guys. You know, sharing honestly with as far as fathers go and and your insights because I think that this could help a lot of people out there. Uh, Lenny, thanks for uh, you know sharing that with us as well. And of course, if you guys want to get you. any of Mr. G's cookies. MrPotsProtein.net, you got to get the peanut butter and jelly cups. They're unbelievable. They're unbelievable. Uh, we're going to send Lenny a little gift package. You got to send uh, Greg a little bit more, too, because I don't think he's tried these as well. For now, we're out of no, time. I sent him the cheesecake. Right. Thing oh, I want the cheesecake, too. Absolutely. For now, I can't, I can't I try can't that peanut that. butter. Yeah, we can talk forever. <laughs> I got to wrap this up, guys, because I got Chris Bumstead right. rating. Guys, I'll see you next week. Uh, same bad time, same bad station. And remember, never give up, never give up. Never give up, cause God loves you, baby. <laughs>